Today on Real Life, finding hope in the wake of tragedy on Living Well. Author and speaker Terry Squires, the creator of Today's Girls. Dr. Kurt Bjorklund brings the seven minute word and finding daily nourishment from God's Word. Today on Real Life. This is Real Life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you, and the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black with my wife Terry and our founder Norma Bixler. Ladies, it is Holy Week. Oh, wow. We are in Holy Week, Monday yeah, of Holy right. Week. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, looking forward to Easter? I am. I am. I, mine is also a little more selfish in that our daughter comes home from college, so I always like having all of our family together during Easter, so that makes it special too. It is. Mm -hmm. We used to have these giant Easter egg hunts. Yes. We probably still will do it. We do it every year. Yeah. Even when the kids are adults, are out there looking for these Easter eggs all over oh. the yard. But now they don't want candy, they want money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and movie tickets. Yeah, they that's want what movie we tickets. Want. That's what the we've elevated our Easter egg hunt. <laughs> More of a price. Well, that sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. You have to come it? over, Norma. Maybe we'll get you over on Easter and go and look for the Easter egg hunt. You can join us. In the <laughs> I'll tell you, we had an Easter egg hunt once when it was raining. We had to have it in the hives. Uh -oh. oh, and wow. we went to Parsonage. It was a big house, and we had lots of good places to hide it. And about April, I smelled this. Smell <laughs> in the dining room. It was a rotten egg that nobody oh, found. <laughs> you use real eggs. No. Well, yeah, those days. Yeah. That's right. That's sense. right. Makes they sense. sure did. But I, mm -hmm. I want to just thank you too, and and all the staff for the wonderful day we had on Saturday. I know you worked hard, and I know you did too. And it was wonderful, and everybody enjoyed it, especially I did. Well, I'm glad. It was a wonderful, uh, exciting celebration Absolutely. of 35 years of broadcasting. That's what we had. Mm -hmm. I hope you tuned in over the weekend. Maybe you saw the television version. But we had several hundred. I'm not quite sure the count of how many people were there. Almost 500 people uh, at a luncheon. It was, uh, it was like a family reunion. Absolutely. So, so it was. It was. It was very oh, much like yes. a family reunion. Well, all this week, I'm going to shift into this. All this week, you I want to take just a few minutes, and I, I want to trace the steps of Jesus in Passion Week. What did Jesus do today on Monday? But before I talk about Monday, and I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch my time real closely, I want to refer back to yesterday, because yesterday is what we call Palm Sunday, where he traveled mm. into Jerusalem from Bethany. Bethany was his home base during the whole Passion Week. He lived in Bethany at his friend's house, Lazarus' house, where that was where they set up their base. And yesterday tra they traveled into Jerusalem, and then you know Palm Sunday with the triumphant entry and all that happened there. And then he went back that night to Bethany. Bethany is about two miles from uh, Jerusalem, so it's just a small walk. Today, in the life of Jesus, he came back from Bethany to Jerusalem, and this is the day that on his way back he cursed the fig tree. Mm. Remember the, the, the story of cursing the fig, fig tree mm -hmm. because it didn't bear fruit when it was supposed to? He, he cursed it and it dried up, and then he drove the money changers <clears throat> out of the temple today. Mm. This is that on this Monday in that week, he drove those money changers mm. out. And remember, he said, my, You've made my house, my father's house, into a house of uh, thieves, mm -hmm. and it should be a house of prayer. He did that, turned over the tables, debated with the chief priests. Mm. So he got engaged with the chief priests today on this, uh, on this Monday. And then he went back to, he and his disciples went back tonight to Bethany to be with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. That's what happened on Monday. If you want to read about it, look at Matthew chapter 21 and Luke chapter 11. Those are the reference points for today's mm. point. Tomorrow we'll talk about Tuesday, but stay with me as we go through the whole week. Here on the program on Thursday, we're going to celebrate the Seder in our Monday Thursday special and have an authentic Seder, and I want you to be able to join that. That's a very special meal that is prepared in reference to the exodus of the Jews out of Egypt. And then on Friday, we're going to have communion. So get ready, get your elements ready, a cracker, grape juice, 
and join us in communion on Friday. It's going to be a special time for us as a family mm. to go into the, into, the, into the Easter, the Holy Weekend. Terry, the Fresh Start Walk. Yes, the Fresh Start Walk. It's this Saturday, so I'm excited about it. I hope not only will the Fresh Start folks be coming, but we are inviting all of you to come and be part of our Fresh Start Walk. It's, it's, it's unique in that it's a prayer walk. So we're going to meet this Saturday at 10 a.m., and we're going to meet right at the station. And we're going to do a mile walk, but we're going to have a special time of prayer. Prayer for your individual needs and also for uh, Cornerstone, uh, the community, and going beyond that. So it'll be a great time to connect and to meet new friends, too. Yes, it mm -hmm. will be. Yeah, it'll be a time so. of spiritual endeavor and a right. physical and a Three social. Three in one. Three in Can one. you beat that, you know? <laughs> and I'm praying that we'll have perfect weather. Perfect oh, weather. oh, that's true. <laughs> I just assumed that was going to happen. Well, good I, weather. I, so, I just wanted to add that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. That's a good prayer request. That is. Well, uh, you, you can always reach out to us by email at family at ctvn.org. Write it down. You can always send us an email and, and ask us questions or tell us what you're thinking. Or you can call our prayer partners. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a week, our prayer partners are standing by, ready to talk with you, to stand with you. Today's scripture is from the Psalm 136, verse 26. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Amen. His loving kindness, Norma, is everlasting. I like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's yes. gonna, not Amen. just for this age, but for right. the age to come. God's loving kindness. How, how, how wonderful that is. It is, especially during this time as, G, as we celebrate Easter. This is the ultimate, yes, ultimate way that God showed his loving kindness was through Jesus. By giving his son. Mm -hmm. He gave his son so that we could be in relationship with him Amen. and experience his love. Mm -hmm. Not just hear about it, not just watch it from afar as he loves someone else, but to be in a relationship with him and experience his mm -hmm. love. That's what's there for you too. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, uh, let's enter into some praise time with our special guest, Malcolm Williams, as he leads us in singing, Everybody Ought to Praise Him. Malcolm. Yay. Come on everybody, the scriptures declare that everything that have breath, give God praise and glory. So we've come to bless him today. Just a little song that you can move around with, come on. Everybody praise him. Everybody bless the Lord. Everybody praise him. Everybody You can say that Lord. with me. Everybody praise him. Everybody bless the Lord, yeah. Everybody praise him. Oh, everybody bless the Lord. everybody praise him. Everybody bless the Lord, yeah. Everybody praise him. Everybody bless the Lord. Come on, say everybody praise him. Everybody bless the Lord. I was created to give God praise. That's what we were created to do. So while you're sitting there, just clap your hands, and we're going to bless the Lord again. Everybody praise him. Everybody bless the Lord, yeah. I like this next part. We just say, everybody, 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 praise him. Everybody, everybody, bless the Lord. Everybody, 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 Woo! praise him. I see you got it. Come on. Shout everybody, 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 praise him. Everybody, bless the Lord. Oh. Come on. Shout, I was created to give God praise. Yes, I was. I was created to give God praise. That's the only thing that I have to do just to make God smile. So I say, everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. The King of Kings. Everybody praise the Lord. What about this? Everybody clap your hands. The Bible says clap your hands on you. Shout out to God. What about everybody do your day? And everybody do your day. Hallelujah. We're blessing the Lord today and giving him glory and praise and honor. 
I just want to say a couple of more things in here. Let's shift this atmosphere. Let's shift this atmosphere. God's about to do something. Let's shift Let's it. Shift this God wants to be glorified. Let's shift Let's this atmosphere. Let's oh, let's shift this atmosphere. Let's you know what I say? I decree healing. Somebody's about to get healed. I decree healing. Cancer, you got to go. I decree healing. By my high blood pressure, I decree healing. I'm saying this, I need a miracle. I need God to do something. I need a miracle. I'm waiting on my next blessing. I need. Hallelujah. I'm speaking miracle. I don't know about you, but I need a breakthrough. I've been dealing with this too long. I need a breakthrough. Oh, I need a, I need a breakthrough. I shout, I need a breakthrough, God. Woo! So if you believe that, you can praise them like it's already done in advance. We bless your name, God, and give you the glory. Hallelujah. Everybody praise him. Everybody bless the Lord. Everybody bless the Lord. Amen. There you go. There you go. I want him to come back and sing. Yeah, Malcolm, come on, let's sing some more. Hallelujah. Amen. That just, it does change the atmosphere, it does, yeah, it, it yes. does change the atmosphere. You know, it's important to do that because there's sometimes when things are, are hard. Mm -hmm. It's when things are hard. And in this week's Living Well, we're going to take a look at the events of this past Wednesday. Making national headlines, a student right here in Pittsburgh, in fact, in our, our son's school, was... Um, was involved in an incident, or he wasn't personally involved, but where 22 young people were stabbed, and I think a SRO was stabbed. Four of the students remain in area hospitals in critical condition. Terry and I now know firsthand what it feels like when your child is close to something like this. Joining us once again is Dr. Kathy Sigmund, a licensed psychologist and faculty member at Geneva College in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, here to talk to us about how we can make sense of these kinds of experiences. Welcome back. Thank Welcome you. back. Thank you. We want to talk more in depth. I mean, we've mm -hmm. had a couple little spots that we've run over the weekend, mm -hmm. talking about it in a very broad basis. But when some kind of uh, incident like this happens in a life, whether it's big like this or just small in, a, in, a, in an individual family life, stress starts to occur. And what are what what are we as as family members to do to help our our children in this mm -hmm. case? That's a that's an excellent question, and um, I love the way you framed the question. Um, stress starts to occur. That's the very definition of trauma. Mm -hmm. It's an unexplainable, uh, unbelievable, stressful situation that impacts a person, family, and community. Mm -hmm. um, and so the best thing to do as parents and as mm -hmm. family, as loved ones, mm -hmm. is to talk to your youngster, talk to your youth about the trauma, remain calm, remain um, caring in your, in your discussion of it, uh, be supportive <laughs> of the child um, in, in the various ways that you're supportive of each other. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take time. It's going to take time. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about uh, days in which this uh, trauma, this horrific event has occurred. And um, the, the stressful mm -hmm. symptoms, uh, they can last for days into mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, and being aware of that as parents is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, and also being aware of how this has impacted you as well. Well, I, what you mentioned is really critical. I think that a lot of times we think that a Band-Aid will make it all better. So, okay, it happened last week. Uh, we go, they're going back to school on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So everything's going to be back to normal. But that's not really the case. That's very unrealistic. Mm -hmm. um, and I think particularly in our American uh, culture and society where time is very much structured and regimented and mm -hmm. we're expecting things to happen in a microwave sort of society, mm -hmm. we are very much off base in understanding mm -hmm. how these things um, heal. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about. And thank God um, for, for Jesus and mm -hmm. his caring and, and how he teaches us as Christians to care for one another and for other people because we're really talking about healing. Mm -hmm. it, and that's, it, that's the bottom line of it. Um, these things may resolve and that it doesn't seem to have the impact as it had before, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, it can carry over into years and can mm -hmm. uh, mushroom into something even more complicated. So it's something that we need to really take on and keep on, you know, and, yes. and to not, um, not to just go, okay, you know, shut the door, it's behind us. You know, we need to be sensitive to it. So. I was wondering, how does fear enter in? Does that, is that something you have to really deal with? You know, that's, a, that's another excellent, excellent uh, point. Um, fear can, can enter into it, but um, in this sort of situation, we're dealing with an actual event. So we're talking in terms of not fear anticipating something that has happened, but an actual event that has happened that was very dangerous. But you're, you're absolutely right. The enemy and just the way the human mind and uh, mm -hmm. system can work, it can create a fear and anxiety about the event that it's long past, but nonetheless, we still have stress reactions associated with the event. Right. So that's a, that's a nice point. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, we went to the counseling session last night in a local elementary school where uh, a counseling group came in to talk to the students and the parents about reactions. And it was, it was a nice thing. And you know, the community has, has banded together too. Mm -hmm. and you see a lot of uh, being uh, Franklin Regional Strong, there are signs everywhere, right. I'm yes. FR Strong, and, mm -hmm. and the students are making t-shirts that talk about that. So that type of a support group, where you're, yes. you become part of something rather than being outside of something, Yes. How, how important is it to become involved like that? That's very important. I mean, that's so extremely important. So not only, and another wonderful point that you brought up, um, not only is it important for families to band together and to minister and care and love on their youth that have experienced this horrific event, but when the community comes together, so it's another layer of support. So the, you're sending a message. Not only um, is my individual child supported, but the children of our community are supported. Mm -hmm. So we, so it's a much larger force, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the Word of God says, you become one, mm -hmm. you know, in, mm -hmm. in dealing with the with the trauma. So I know that because we are so, we're so new into the area, we've only lived here three months, that that's been probably a challenge that Don and I have shared with Dylan is that. Um, he, we really haven't established relationships here. Mm -hmm. And so it's really been important that we get him to talk to a counselor. And, and I was just so, I was relieved that when we were at the counseling there, there were other kids that he knew. Because I really feel mm -hmm. it's important, like you said, to get connected. Because mm -hmm. kids need to talk about it to their fellow, yes. fellow peers too. Not, you know, not just to mom and dad, mm -hmm. but to others as well. So there's something about the community there. You know? Well, um, I heard a girl say on television, a student mm -hmm. that was went to school there, and she said, "I hope, I'm hoping that something good comes out of this." Mm. So you know, it's a terrible thing that happened, but God always enters in if He's invited. Amen. And I'm I'm looking for some some wonderful things to happen. I believe that. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe. I don't know what he can do, but he always does something wonderful. He does. He yeah. does. And the churches have, have, have come together and have mm -hmm. individually and as a group stepped up in the area too. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of our church system here, our, our brothers and sisters in the churches that have made points of demonstrating their love and <clears throat> both in their services and outside of their services. So that's the community that rises mm -hmm. up. Yep. But you know what, Dr. Dr. Sigmund, sometimes it doesn't have to be a big event like this that can cause trauma. Mm -hmm. It can be a personal event that mm -hmm. can cause right. the same kinds of trauma in an into a Ab divorce, absolutely. a uh, abuse, absolutely. a uh, an abandonment, a, mm -hmm. some even a financial thing, a, a yes. bankruptcy, or yes. I mean, you know, anything that causes that sudden trauma. Mm -hmm. How does an individual, do they go through the same kind of healing process? Yes, absolutely. Um, whether it's on an individual level or whether it's on a community level like this one, the healing process is, is, is about the same. 
Um, mm -hmm. the, the difference here is that you have a community coming together mm -hmm. and nay, the nation. You have people praying for this community yes, all over. That's right. You know, um, and so sometimes when it's just an individual event, others don't know to pray. Mm -hmm. And so that was a wonderful uh, point that that was made about um, churches coming together and praying right. for the mm -hmm. for the young people and for the community. Mm -hmm. um, and I too believe, like 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 you believe, that what Satan meant for evil or what the fall meant for evil, God will use for good. There will be healing. There yes. will be ministry mm -hmm. that may not have come out of this situation that will come out of this situation, mm -hmm. and God will redeem it. Yes. So if we were talking to some folks and they're not sure, the, one of the first things is not to be in denial. So that's yes. one thing. And then as they help their friend or their mm -hmm. community and to accept the fact that they experienced some form of trauma, even mm -hmm. if they may not have seen anything, they were in that same area or whatever, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. the next step would be to talk to someone about it or talk, if you don't, you know, what what would be the next step you would you ask? Know, it's, it was a, it's a wonderful idea that the, the community um, has community counseling available. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone's going to need that mm -hmm. though, um, but there are warning factors that we should take in consideration. Like for instance, if your young person is totally isolating becomes depressed, doesn't want to mm -hmm. eat, doesn't want to go anywhere, and like you mentioned, the fear comes in, they're afraid of everything, avoiding everything. Um, you're going to need to watch that. If that goes on for days and weeks and it seems to be getting worse instead of getting better, you want your child to, to get counseling. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. may, maybe you're experiencing something like this in your own life. Perhaps it's not a part of a big event like what's happened in ours, but it's something personal for you and you don't have a support group, you don't have somebody that you can talk to. You feel isolated and alone, and you know that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get you isolated and alone so that you can be vulnerable. But two together stand, the word says. That's what we're here for. That's why our prayer line is here. We have counselors standing by right now that you can call 888-665-4483 and talk to them about what's going on. They're not, they're not, I said counselor, I shouldn't say that. They're not counselors, they're prayer partners. What their job is, is to take your needs to God. Because the one who's gonna solve the source of your, of your answer isn't us, it's not a person, it's God. God will take you to where he wants you to be. And truly, good can come out of any bad. Not just because it's a natural progression, but it's the divine hand of God mm -hmm. who takes something that mm -hmm. was meant to destroy you and turns it into your good. It's a miracle. That miracle's waiting for you, so call 888-665-4483. And if you're in this area and you want to talk about your experiences, and you maybe weren't at the school, but you know, your kids go to another school, or your grandkids go to another school, and you're going, if it happened there, maybe it can happen here. You just need somebody to pray with you. Call, call us, we're here for you, we want to stand with you. And we'll be right back. Later on Real Life, Author Deborah Buckingham shares nourishing food for the soul. Dr. Kurt Bjorklund begins a new teaching series on the seven minute word. And coming up next, author and speaker Terry Squire shares her heart for ministry. That's next on Real Life. Mom, don't forget to pick me up at school right at 3 30, okay? I have to go to Ames to study before Zaga breakfast. Thanks, Mom. You know, the being best mom is a full time job in addition to the one I already have. It's in these rare moments of me time that I'm so thankful that Cornerstone is here. Cornerstone ministers to me with the programming that feeds both my heart and soul, that teaches me how to be the best me I can be. There are very few moments when I can invest in myself, but it's nice to know that when I can, I can watch a network that cares for me. We have a big announcement. Drum roll, please. Sister to Sister is going to be its own 30-minute program. <laughs> starting May 7th at 10 a.m. And 2 p.m. And 9 p.m. And for your night owls like me, 2 a.m. That's right, sisters. More topics, more teaching, more guests, more fun. It's going to be great. So set your DVRs. Mark your calendar. It's Sister to Sister, debuting May 7th. Hi, I'm Johnny Erickson Tata of Johnny and Friends aired here on Cornerstone Network. All of us at the ministry congratulate Cornerstone on this, their 35th anniversary. And a special thanks to you for your partnership 
and helping Cornerstone reach this incredible milestone. God bless you and keep watching Cornerstone Network. excitement and be part of our studio audience. Call 412-824-3930. We're all very excited here at Cornerstone behind the scenes about a new segment that's starting in just over a week on our real life program. It's called Today's Girls. And we thought you'd like to meet the creator of the segment, author and speaker Terry Squires. So you're about to find out she has a passion about reaching out to young people in her books and on her website. Over the last 14 years, God's been using her in a mighty way. Let's meet Terry. When you, Terry, when you think about teenagers, teenage girls, I know that's a real soft spot for you. It is, yeah. What, what, what kind of got you started with the heart for, for teenagers? Well, you know, in my own life as a teenage girl, my life was chaotic. You know, I came from a broken family, and all of us, there were five kids in our, life, or in our family, and we were all out on our own by the age 16 and 17. Wow. And when I was a senior in high school, I didn't have a place to go. Hmm. My brothers went one way, I went another way, but a special person was looking out for me, hmm. and it was my swim coach and his family. And they grabbed me and said, you know what, Terry, you are going to finish school and you're going to go to college. Wow. So they took me in and they showed me the love of Jesus just mm. by their actions. And I have to tell you, when I lived with them, I thought they were so old. <laughs> and they were 33 and 35. <laughs> Oh, yes. Ancient of, wow. ancient of days. And so when I look back on it, they truly impacted my life. And mm. that's what my home ministry has been about, the power mm. of one. Because wow. of one man, one wife, and they just showed me the love. And, and so I really, truly believe that you can impact one life at a time because you never know what that next person Absolutely. is going to do with their ministry. Absolutely. Well, maybe you can share with us a little more about what your ministry, The Impact One, is about. I, well, it goes back to that. Mm -hmm. They gave me the inspiration to share with others that they can reach the world just by sharing their faith to one mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. because you never know what that next person is going to do with their life or their ministry. So, so you, went, you went through high school at their house? So you went through college I, at their house? My senior year I spent, and I was a swimmer, uh -huh. and he knew that I could probably swim in college. So he said, Terry, you are going to college. Mm -hmm. And they did so many other special things for me. And I have to tell you, we still stay in touch oh. to this day. Awesome. And they come to Nashville and spend the weekends with us. And oh, we ha email and talk on the phone. And now you want to know how old they are? I know this is what I tell 40. them. I'm doing the math. <laughs> they are 65 and 67. And when wow. they drive up and I'm like, do you guys ever age? They, oh, they look the, the same. same. So they are wow. wonderful, wonderful people. Well, God has done a lot with you mm -hmm. in, in, in terms of the ministry. You've, you're an accomplished author, speaker. Yeah, right. you've, done a lot of, you've done a lot in a very short period of time. What, what was the first written project? Was it in the teenage world that you it wrote? It was the todaysgirls.com. Wow. And again, it was based on my friends in high school. It was about a swim team. And so we wrote 12 fiction books about my life mm. and I'm one of those characters but nobody really knows who I am <laughs> unless they know my background there's the swim coaches in there and mm. and so that really took off and introduced me to this world of publishing because I didn't go to college to be a writer or an author I'm a registered nurse mm. so you know God has different plans and he Absolutely. pulls you into where he wants you don't you think that it's really fantastic that God takes us from 
one place to another in his in his own timing? It is. It has mm -hmm. to do with God's timing, just like this project. Mm -hmm. The books and the website have been out there for 14 years. We've reached thousands of girls. Mm -hmm. but And I've always wanted to do this program. Oh, wow. And 14 years later, here we are. You know, when we put our own agendas aside and trust God, He's going to bring the right partners, the right people, the girls, the scripts, it all comes together. And Don, you know that. <laughs> I do know that. God has his own timing, doesn't he? He, he does. sure does. He does. It's amazing how he has, you have kept your passion that you've had all these years and that you've kept up with the purpose that God's called you. I just, I love the teen girls. Interesting, I love teen, the teen boys too. I raised three sons. <laughs> and so everyone always asks me, why are you writing about teen girls when you know about guys? I think guys are more complicated. I agree, <laughs> well, I, I don't agree. Know. I, we, we have two of both, two of That's each. That's right, yeah. Two girls, uh -huh. two boys. So I'm not ready to vote on that uh, ballot yet. Oh. They both have their own twists and turns. Definitely. They definitely do. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned the project. I think this would be a good time for us to, to talk about that. We're doing a special series of programs with Terry here at Cornerstone, talking about our Cornerstone family, where we highlight the lives of five girls that are teenagers. And we're doing it in a very cool way. It's very creative actors and actor, actresses that mm -hmm. are playing these parts. And Terry has a, a part in it too, not as an actor, but as a, as a teacher and narrator, and it's called Today's Girls. And you're gonna start being able to watch it here on Cornerstone on Wednesdays in the real life program. And you'll hear more about that. We're gonna talk some more about what that is about. We also wanna let you meet some of our teenage uh, uh, actors so you can see them and the characters that they play. But that's coming up. But before we get to that, I just wanna thank you for being part of oh. Cornerstone and the family. Uh -huh. Thank well, you. I mean, this is, has been a wonderful blessing to me mm. and an honor to work with you. Oh, I think it's been great that we've been able to work together, you know, it's just to see your purpose re re fulfilled. You know? Well, I, and it, I think you guys at home yeah. should know that our, we, we have family on, on mm -hmm. Cornerstone. We, mm -hmm. we are family and we care about our family. And Terry and her husband, Ted, are family to us too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We are, have been friends yeah. for many, many years. Mm -hmm. and. Who knew that God would have put our connections together like this? But we've right. had many a nice meal together. Yes, we have. <laughs> had some nice, yes, fun we times have. A together. Lot of talk. Yes, a lot lots of, of talk. Lots of talk That's about right. our teens. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's a it's it's kind of a full circle in God's time, as you say. Yes, he God. brings out His purposes. We know, Terry, that God is going to use this segment in real life to touch people, mm -hmm. and who this is created for are moms and grandmoms. Yes. So if you're a teenager, great. We're, we're happy that you're gonna watch, but it's created for moms and grandmoms mm -hmm. to learn how to really deal with these teenage girls. Because they're facing some real issues, Terry. Right. This isn't, it's hard to be a teenage girl. And Absolutely. Christian girls are not immu immune to what's going yeah. on in today's life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Parents and grandparents need to know what's going on. And, and how to address it. Mm -hmm. Because you may see it going on, but you sure don't know how to deal with or it. Or they might think that, oh, my teen daughter would never do that. Right, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Well, and good girls can make bad choices. They sure and can. when that happens, there has to be a way for us to offer redemption and offer that girl another place to begin again. Mm -hmm. And each, in each of the segments that Terry does, she's also gonna provide to you, if you need it, a, a ministry sheet mm -hmm. so you can call in and get a copy of that for yourself so you can use it as a tool for you or your, or your, or your mom or your grandmom or whoever. Well, Terry, thank you so much for, you. for being with us. I can't wait to see the first program. I can't wait either. I think it debuts on May the 7th. May 7th. May 7th Ooh. on the Wednesday program. And okay. we want you to mark it on your calendar, yep. tune in, and watch the first episode of Today's Girls. Great. And we'll be right back. Thank you. It's time now for our daily study in God's Word. Today, we're going to begin a new series of teaching from Dr. Kurt B. Orkin, Senior Pastor of Orchard Hill Church in Wexford, Pennsylvania. His series, get this, is called Failures in Marriage, and he begins now on today's seven-minute word.
Hi. Over the next uh, few days, if you hang with us, uh, I would like to just talk with you about marriage. And part of the reason for that is there are a few things in life that are probably more significant than finding the person that you will love and marry and then how that marriage lives over time. And I remember learning this in a lot of different ways, but one of the ways was I heard Bill McCartney once say, he was the founder of Promise Keepers years and years ago. He said that you can tell a lot about a man by the countenance of his wife. And I remember hearing that and thinking, oh, that can't be true. What if the wife just isn't uh, you know, a certain kind of person who's happy or something? But as I thought about it more and more, I realized that, that you really can tell a lot about a marriage, about people, by the countenance of their spouse. So you can tell a lot about a man uh, by the countenance of his wife, a lot about a woman by the countenance of her husband. And wherever you are, whether you're married or whether you're hoping to be married someday or maybe you're just happy right where you are, having the kind of marriage that, that, that you would long for will make a huge difference in your life. And even beyond that, you know, it's interesting to me at least how much time and energy we'll spend in our culture when it comes to things like physical fitness or academic achievement or career advancement. And yet we get married and assume that we know everything we need to know about marriage. And as a pastor, one of the things that I've seen is, is when couples come to get married, often they just say, you know, it's uh, great that we're getting married, we're good, and we don't really need a whole lot. And yet a lot of times then I'll see couples toward the end of marriage, and it'll be amazing how hard their marriage will be. And so what I'd like to do is just show you a, a verse in the Bible that's repeated. In fact, in, in the entire Bible with so many verses that, that have to do with different things uh, about different important topics, there are not a lot of topic or a lot of verses about marriage, but there's one verse that's repeated five different times. It starts in Genesis 2, and then it's repeated in the Gospels. It's repeated in, in different places. And the verse is basically this. I'll read it from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. It says this. It says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And what I'd like to do today is just begin talking about some failures in marriage, and then uh, over the next coming days, some of the other failures. And today, we'll just focus on this word leave. And the word leave, uh, I think, points to one of the failures in marriage, and that is a failure to cut the cord. And I use cut the cord here, obviously, as an allusion to the umbilical cord, but it's amazing to me how many times people will be financially, emotionally, physically dependent on their parents, even when they're married, but, but, but even more than that, when they'll be emotionally still dependent on their parents. And they'll be in a place where they're consistently coming back to mom and dad, and, and they don't establish a new priority or a new home in any substantial way. And, and it's important in marriage that your spouse doesn't have to compete for your attention. I remember reading this in a little book called Letters to Philip. When I was first married, uh, he talked about, uh, there were letters to his son who was about to get married. And he said to his son, he said, when you're married, he said, I want you when your mother and I come to visit you to walk right past your mother, right past me, and go kiss your wife. And he said, because it's, it's symbolic that she's now the new priority, a bigger priority than your mother or I will ever be again. And I remember when I heard that, just thinking, oh, that's kind of goofy. And then I got married, and my parents would come visit, my wife's parents would come visit, and, and, and that little thought stuck in my mind, and I would walk right past my own mother to kiss my wife when I would get home. And, and it's a, just a little symbolic way of saying, you are the new priority. And, and what this means in terms of, of a relationship is that we consistently find ways to, to, to make ourselves make our spouse the bigger priority than anything else in our lives. And clearly this text is talking about your family of origin, but I think it would be fair to say that, that we need to make our spouse a bigger priority than our past, than other people, than our hobbies, than our career. In fact, you probably won't have a very strong marriage if your marriage and your spouse is always competing with something else in your life. What you'll have instead is you'll have a marriage that's consistently fighting for attention, consistently demanding something from you that you'll resent giving. And the way that this works is in part by saying, I'll make this a priority and you can 
come up with the list of activities, things like date night and having uh, you know, a no text or phone rule at a certain time of night or all these kinds of things. And those things are helpful, but they're not the ultimate thing that's helpful. Because what they do is they give you techniques to try to manage something in your life when what probably you need more than anything is to have a sense of the ultimacy of Jesus Christ because when you have an ultimacy of Jesus Christ then what happens is he's your ultimate priority and instead of demanding something from your spouse that, that your spouse can never give you what you'll do instead is you'll be able to give to your spouse the priority and place that they deserve because you have your priorities now in a very different way in a way that that really allows you to to give yourself fully to your spouse and to do that, what you'll have to do is come to grips with the fact that your life will never be just the way you want it, but instead that Christ is redeeming you and is preparing you for what is ultimate. And when you do that, then you'll be able to cut the cord in a way that you'll be able to say, now I will allow this marriage to be the priority, this marriage to be my, my home, my life, because I have a greater home. And so I don't have to fight between different things in this world. So you can make a big mistake in marriage just by failing to cut the cord, by not leaving your family of origin or any of the other activities, hobbies, career that you have in your life. Family Times. Join the real life family for wonderful family times. April 21st through May 4th. Family Times of Ministry with Richard Roberts, Lindell Cooley, and Judy Jacobs. Warm Memories with Mike Smalley, Keith Duncan, and Steve Munsey. Family Values, Ministry, Worship, Prayer, and the Word of God. Join us April 21st through May 4th for a real life family time. Life is uncertain. Who can tell what's just around the corner? Every week on In Touch, we explore the certainty of God. He's revealed Himself to us through the Bible and invites us to walk with Him along a path of promise. Join me here each week for In Touch. Join Dr. Charles Stanley for biblical encouragement each week on In Touch. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus Christ came to become you at the cross that you might become Him today at the Father's right hand. Hallelujah! God does not do miracles because of your obedience. God does miracles because of Jesus' obedience at the cross. And you are the beneficiary. In the very area of your weakness, God's grace superabounds. Wow, 35 years. Hi everybody, I'm Richard Roberts with a very special word of congratulations. 35 years of Cornerstone Television. Yay, praise God for 35 years. Thank God as the Lord, as the Lord tarries, there'll be many more years of gospel television through Cornerstone. Joining us now is an author who loves to emphasize how our time studying scripture feeds our soul like nothing else can. Deborah Buckingham has taught Bible studies for years and has now released a new devotional book called Nourishments. Deborah, welcome to Real Life. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank She's so glad that you're here. Thank you. Yeah. She came a long way. She came a long way. <laughs> yes, you did. Your, uh, your book is brand new. Mm -hmm. Brand new, hot off the press. How's it feel? Is this your first book? This is my first one. Mm -hmm. It feels like a baby has been <laughs> born. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work goes into the, yeah. putting, mm -hmm. putting the book together uh, like mm -hmm. that. It, we, yeah. Well, you haven't really said where she's from. You said she came a long way. Well, so yeah. Well, Deborah, where are you from? 
My husband and I live in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I call it God's country. <laughs> Beautiful Teton Mountains. We literally live in the Teton National Wilderness. Oh, how wow. nice. Yeah. How nice. It is a beautiful place to visit and yeah. probably to live. I just a wonderful uh, God's Glory is everywhere you look. It it's sure beautiful is. Beautiful glory. Well, I guess it's a nice place to write a book, too. It is the perfect <laughs> place to write a book. We, our family actually moved there from Southern California. And I don't know if I would have written nourishments in California because I was always so busy. Mm -hmm. But you have permission to be still and quiet. And who knows what can happen when you do that. <laughs> well, tell us about it. What? Yeah. What was the motivating uh, mm -hmm. factor to get you to do this book? Well, when my kids were younger in elementary school, I used to write on index cards these little love notes to them. And basically, I would take a Bible verse and I personalize it for them. You know, it can be too long because kids aren't going to read too much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, oftentimes they throw it away with their carrot sticks. But many times I would say at night, did you read your nourishments? I always called it their nourishments. And they would say, Mom, it, it's just amazing how God knew just what I needed for that day. And shockingly, when my son was in high school, he played on the football team. And he said, Mom, you know, my whole, the whole football table that I sit with kind of makes fun of your nourishments, but they want to hear it every day. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Aww. So it kind of became a ministry mm -hmm. for me because a lot of these kids would um, ask me to write their parents some index cards when they were going through difficult times mm. like illness or financial difficulties and i just started giving them away as gifts oh that's awesome yeah and then you thought maybe if i put them together <laughs> now your strategy yeah. on them is one a day for monday through friday yes mm -hmm. and i think that was a gift from the lord because if if you have a little bit of an obsessive personality like me, I love doing a devotional. It's the best way to start a day. But almost all of them are 365 days, and things happen in life. And then I get behind, and then I want to catch up. And it was just amazing, Don, because um, actually the way I started writing this, I was my kids were in college. I was emailing them their nourishments, and I thought, Hmm, maybe if I just start journaling this, unpacking it a little bit more, um, and once I started, I couldn't stop. But the flow stopped at 260. And I thought, well, that's odd. 260, which is Monday through Friday, 52 weeks a year. So God gives us grace to catch up on Saturday and hopefully go to church on Sunday. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. Well, I thought um, one of the... Um, things I noticed, not one, but mm -hmm. something to bring out right now, mm -hmm. is that you take the time at the beginning of the of your devotional to do some definitions, yes. you know, defining what the different uh, names of God. And yes. I thought that was really great um, because as we do our devotion, there's God has mentioned that he's, his name means different things. You know, God, yeah. uh, God Rapha and mm -hmm. the Jaira, he's mm -hmm. a provider. And I mm -hmm. thought that was really awesome well, how you defined that. Terry, from teaching and um, Bible study for so many years, there's this uh, theme that keeps coming up with so many Christians, and that is, can I really trust God? Mm. And I always encourage them, you won't trust anyone if you don't even know their name. Mm -hmm. How can we trust someone we don't know their name? And so for me, when I'm going through any kind of difficulty, or even when, sometimes we go through dry periods, I will look up the names of God and mm -hmm. read the scripture verses that come with those names, mm -hmm. and it just puts everything back in perspective. It does. It there was, really there does. was one, mm -hmm. Deborah, that I was going to ask you if you would sure. read it for us. I, sure. I enjoyed several of them. I didn't have the time to read all of them. Of course, I will by the end of the year. <laughs> but, but on page 92, yes. there's one called Good Fruit. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you read the devotional part? It's the, John, the reference is John 15, 7 and Colossians 1, 9. But would you read that for us? I love to, um, and I'll just read the very beginning of John 15, 7, because it goes right along with nourishments that the Lord Jesus is saying, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. The devotional says, your Abba Father does not accept a life lived based on good intentions or feelings. 
Rather, he requires his children to be intelligent followers. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Understanding he is God and you are not lays the foundation for true discernment and insight. However, having good knowledge without a life that honors and pleases the Lord will profit you nothing. You will know you are growing in spiritual wisdom when your love for others increases. When you demonstrate patience, kindness, gentleness, and forgiveness, for then you are producing every kind of good fruit. The more you give in to God's ways, the more fruit of love and grace you will produce. This will firmly implant your roots into a deeper understanding of your amazing Lord. Are you getting to know your God better and better? Is your love for others growing? I can see why you call it nourishment, the little, little nuggets. Yeah. of uh, refreshment and truth mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and the meat of his word mm -hmm. as we as we go through our day. We're about a minute left in, in the segment. Did you? I what just you got? like this one. I mean, I like them all, but especially <laughs> the Lord to the rescue. You know, yeah. we've been talking Amen. about that this morning. The yeah. Lord to the rescue. I, 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 that is the theme. Absolutely. That is the theme. Well, thank you for coming and being thank with us. Thank you so much. We will put a link on our website on how you can get a copy of Deborah's book for yourself. And this is written for everybody. This is, I, I, Donna, it's just so grievous that I think America is spiritually malnourished. So if you have a soul, this is written for you to be nourished. It means if you have a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a heartbeat. Exactly. Well, well thank you. Yes, we'll be right you. back for today's prayer time where we're going to pray, especially if you've called and you have a need and you want us to stand with you in regards to some trauma that you're going through. But before we do that, let's see what's on tomorrow's real life. On Real Life, credit cards, the good, the bad, and the ugly on Real Money. Arlene Williams concludes her top 10 countdown in the Real Life Kitchen. And author Don Norton discusses the audacity of prayer. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Let me tell you my real life story. I knew I needed God back in my life, so I called the number at Cornerstone Network, and they prayed for me. The prayer was intense, and they told me that they would keep on praying for me. It made me feel better, and I wanted to start all over again. And since then, I feel as if my life has just begun. I haven't had a drink since November 2011. God has changed me after all these years. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to thank all of you who prayed for me. Please pray for my children that they would find the Lord. Thank you, and God bless you. Welcome back. We're here at our prayer table. We're all together. We're going to pray uh, in union and unity for you. Mm -hmm. Still got time to call, 888-665-4483. And I also want you to know that this isn't the only time we pray for our prayer requests. The partner will pray when you call, and then we put them onto our altar here at Cornerstone, and we pray for them as we go through the week, too. So we believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God is a God who answers prayer. We just don't ask and not expect Him to answer. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of praise reports. I'm always excited. Boy, I'm excited a lot here today because we've got a couple of praise reports. Uh, Dolores called in, and she had a lump in her breast for the third time, had a mammogram on Friday. There was nothing there. Yeah. Sonogram, the fluid Praise was God. there. No lump. Prayed Praise by God. a male prayer partner. See, even men know how to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. We got some really powerful praying men. That's, that is for sure. And our, our praise report, too, from Lori, who called and said, blessed to, be, to have Cornerstone on when she was sick. She would turn us on at 2 a.m. She loves uh, real life. It makes her day. She'll never miss it. Amen. Well, praise God, Lori. I'm glad that you're able to watch yes. us and be, be mm -hmm. touched, and even in the middle of the night. That's right. Even in the middle of the night. Sometimes the middle of the night is too... Uh, too uh, a common of a place for all of us to kind of visit mm -hmm. uh, TV. A couple salvation reports. Biggest prayer request answered is for a person to come know Jesus as their Savior. Uh, Lance called and received Jesus as his Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. 
and then Emily birthday party in called mm -hmm. in from Holidaysburg okay. and prayed to uh, rededicate her life to Jesus. Praise, awesome. praise the Lord. We have Amen. some prayer requests. Doctor, what, what's, your, what's your prayer request? Um, this is a prayer request from Arlene and Donna, and it looks like for deliverance from depression, drugs, emotional problems, and addiction. Mm. Mm. Amen. You believe God can, you're a, you're, you're a clinical person. You believe he can help with addictions? More than a clinical person, I believe in the power of prayer and the blood of Jesus Christ to do all things. Amen. 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 She say that well. Jesus. She sure did. I think she's got some practice saying that. <laughs> I believe that too. We see it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you mm -hmm. see it, you're going to believe mm -hmm. it. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, Deborah, who, whose prayer request do you have? This is for David praying for pain and physical healing in his body. Mm. Amen. 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 Well, here's a Carol from New York. She's a New York mom, and uh, so she says uh, an X-ray from for a wrist won't show doesn't show serious damage, but the wrist needs to be healed. Mm. Well, um, Betty had called in and she asked for prayer for her son, Daniel, who has multiple, multiple challenges from drugs to dealing with the occult. And, mm -hmm. and so we just really need to pray that he's set free and, and that there's salvation for her home too. So that's another, that's a prayer request that I have. And, and um, for Susan, that she's just asking for the Holy Spirit just to speak through her so she knows that she can be healed and delivered, and, and that just that she has insight, too, to help pray for other people as well. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I have a prayer request from, I, I, I'm trying to understand, I think from Tiffany and Matthew, I'm assuming that they're parents of a seven-month-old and a 20-month-old who has some physical issues mm -hmm. that they need for us to pray with them and play, believing that these physical issues would be taken care of and for strength for, their, for these babies. Uh, for Helen, who's called in, is in the hospital today, going through some medical procedures. She says she needs a miracle and she's, it's checked cancer. Mm -hmm. So she must be in the hospital for cancer. We believe God is a healer, Helen, and no thing, it's, nothing is too big for him. And then, and the last one for me is, uh, I think, Rose, Right. Who's, who's called in, she has knee in issues. Now you ladies you may be able to relate to this, she has arthritis in her knees and she needs healing because she wants to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Rose. We're gonna, we're gonna believe God that you can go shopping and enjoy your life. Amen. God gives us abundant life. Let's put them all out here. Okay. Put them out here on the, on, the, on the table and let's stretch our hands and our faith out towards these precious people. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for every life that's represented on these, on these sheets. Lord, you know them very well. You knew them before they were formed in their mother's womb. You know exactly what's going on in their lives. Lord, we pray against cancer in Jesus' name. We Jesus. command it to dry up in the name yes. of Jesus. For these babies who yes. are suffering with physical ailment, yes. Lord, touch them in the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. Yes. We pray for the, the woman who is working, Father, and trying to get her body together, Lord, for Rose and her knee and yes. all of these uh, about depression and yes. obsession. Yes. We believe God mighty God that you are, a God of love, a God of compassion and mercy. Lord, that you pour your love out upon these situations and redeem them, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. So glad that you guys were with us today. It was a great program. We're glad you're here too. Watch us next time on Real Life. God bless you.